Ah, see him a beast when you hear that sound like ah, Yeah, beat on the beat when you hear that sound like Ooh, Yeah, bitch and the champ only me one round like ha, Yeah, me, I'm a G bring he in the sound like Mike Owens here, I'm joined by Reese McEwen, who in just under a month's time is fighting for the vacant Cage Warriors Bantamweight title in Newcastle. Reese, always a pleasure to catch up. How are things with you today? Yeah, I'm great, thank you. I'm great. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for giving me some of your time. Um, it's oh, thank been, you. It's been on the horizon. There's been some rumours about you potentially fighting for this vacant title. So what are your emotions now that it's it's official? Yeah, I just feel like um I'm getting what um I've been asking for for the last for the last year or so. But um yeah, after my last fight, I, I said I don't care who is next, it's what's next, and it's the title. And for that fight to be signed and sealed for the title, um, I'm just glad to be fair. Had Cage Warriors told you before this fight was booked because it felt like you were the right the right person. It would think it was just a question of who would be. Against you at Cage where he's told you that you're fighting for the title? No, genuinely not. The only time that I, I heard that I was going to be for the title, because obviously when I won my last fight, um, Kaelin Lockham was the champion still. And um, at that point, there was maybe a two week period where I accepted that I, I don't really know what was going to happen with the Cage Warriors title because we've seen in other divisions that champions might just stay out for the UFC shot. So I thought I'm going to just keep pushing for the title fight. Um, and if the champion sits out, then the champion sits out. I'm going to stay active anyway. Um, but and then I had this feeling that if the champion did defend, he would he would probably want to defend in Dublin. But I was like, yep, yeah, I'm still going to speak out. I'm still going to shout for that title fight. And then when the title became vacant, I was like, I looked at the picture and I thought, right, well, Kaelin Walker is the champ. If he's defending, he's within his rights to pick whoever he wants. That's just the reality of the business. Uh, if he wants to fight in Dublin then I've been told I'm in Newcastle, this is just how it's going to go out. But as soon as the title get made vacant, I was like, if you don't say I'm the number one contender, then I'm number two. I, I'm either one of the two. So I was like, I've got to I've got to be fighting for the title now. And, and I pretty much had it in my, my head that I was fighting for the title. Um, and then before, a few weeks before Manchester, I was given confirmation that I would be fighting for the title. Mm, I love it. Well, as you mentioned, you'll be facing Liam Gittins on the twenty fifth of November in Newcastle. Give me your scout report on your upcoming opponents. Where do you th- what do you think? Yeah, uh, Liam Gittins is a uh, he's a fan favorite, isn't he? Um, when Liam Gittins fights, you want to tune in. Um, he's an exciting fighter. He's um he's always improving, and he's he comes from a good gym. So yeah, it's a very good opponent. It's a kind of opponent you want when I want to take over. What when you look at this fight, what do you feel are the keys to victory for you? Like what do you need to put in place to be victorious in this one? The keys to victory is not getting caught up in a Liam Gettins fight. Um no, but the keys to victory for me is 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 to put it simply, like without even breaking down styles or technique, at the end of the day, the way I'm preparing for the fight is that if I perform to the best of my ability, I will win that title. And if for whatever reason on that night I'm not feeling to the best of my ability and I'm not performing and I'm not switched on, I need to find a way to win. Um, because that's what champions do, and that's what separates the good fighters to the great fighters. So, with all due respect to Liam Gittins, or any other fighter out there, whoever I'm fighting on the 25th of November, I am firmly prepared to fight and showcase how, how good I really am. Um, and if, for whatever reason, I'm having an off night, maybe I wake up, I don't feel too good, um, I will find a way to win. Well, you mentioned there about not getting caught up in a Liam Gittins fight. I'm interested to know how much do you game plan for a specific opponent or how much do you focus on just being the best, the best Reese McEwen and improving your own skills? You would be naive not to look at any opponent that you're fighting. You obviously have to look at their strengths. And, and I, when I when I watch my opponents, I actually like watching them to see what they do well and say, can I learn from them? Like, What do they actually do in a positive manner that could maybe help my game? What kind of style do they have? Is that a style that that uh, reflects how I fight and how have they imposed that on other opponents or have they fought somebody with a similar style to me. So I look at it from an MMA learning co- uh, point of view as opposed to going into look at my opponent and getting caught up in their strengths or even necessarily their weaknesses, um, either putting your opponent on a pedestal or thinking that you're far too good for them. Um, at the end of the day, I'm, when I watch Liam Gittins fight, I'm watching a, a fighter that weighs the same weight as me. So... I'm like, what have they done to other fighters? And, and I just watch it from an educational point of view. Um, but to avoid, like, it was that the question to avoid elite, like, uh, uh, about uh, about other opponents and, and looking at myself. Every day I'm looking to improve myself. If I 
if I get caught off as a mission in the gym, I'm not like, oh no, Liam Gittins, I'm thinking Reese McCoon, what the heck, like, what is that? Yeah. Like, why have you been caught with that sweep? Or you never got that takedown, or you got caught with that jab, like, whatever. Um, I'm trying to dissect my performance at all times and try to be the best version of myself. So every time that um, every time that I train, I'm just trying to add another layer of um, layer of skills to my game. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, it felt a little bit from the chatter online, like the the fan, the fans wanted you in this vacant title bout against Nathan Fletcher. Uh, uh-huh. Obviously, Nathan had to pull out of that fight. I believe in the the Manchester card on fight week with it with an injury. Do you feel like that was the original plan? And if so, is there any disappointment that you're not going up against Southport strong enough for the belt? Um, yeah, there's probably no hiding away from it. I went down to Manchester to to watch that fight. Hmm. Um. <clears throat> There was frustration maybe after the fight, um, or maybe when I first heard the news that, that he was injured in that fight. But this is MMA; uh, opponents are going to change all the time, uh, and my heart's not set in anyone. And I've always said this, right? And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I, I, I'm my heart isn't set on, and I'm not uh, fixated on any any opponent because the opponent can change. I've had opponents changing days out from a fight before, um, on a handful of occasions actually, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and we've just seen that with like the UFC, like uh, Makachev and Volkanovski. This this happens at the highest of levels, and it ha- it's happened to me as an amateur. So it happens throughout the whole sport. So you can't get fixated on opponents, which is why like I, I I've always had that goal of being a cage warriors world champion, and the cage warrior that that is a world title, like a, a, an elite level in the sport. Not many people can say they're a world champion. Mm-hmm. And since I started training, that's I always said I want to be in the UFC, and to be in the UFC. Um, you have to go through cage warriors on their belt. It was never about any other opponent. You need to beat this guy on the way. You need to do this. It, no, 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 else matters. It's just, it's just. I'm on my journey, and I'm gonna. Um, I, I, I'm just gonna. Um, beat anyone that I can to get to the title. Yeah, of course. You mentioned there about the cage warriors title being a goal of yours for for a number of years. How does it feel emotionally, mentally, to be one fight away from a title goal? Um. How do I feel like? Tell you the truth, I feel like I already am the champ. Like seeing my head, like, and I, I really, I really don't want to sound like egotistical, cocky, or deluded when I say that. It's just the way that my mindset's going into this fight. Like, I've got two like, two like key approaches in my mind to think about the fight. One is the most important one, which is the mind map of going into a title fight. And the main map going into a title fight is that nothing changes. It's still a fight. You've given your rounds, which is five five minute rounds, and you're given a weight class, which is one hundred and thirty five pounds. So I need to make one hundred and thirty five pounds, and the day after, I will fight someone over five five minute rounds to fight. So I've got to go and perform to them my best of my ability and win that fight. That is my objective. The main map of the title fight is nothing. That doesn't change. The only thing that changes is when I visualise the fight and the belt, get, when I get my hand raised, the belt gets put around my waist. That's the only difference that changes. And that is the mind map that I've taken into every title fight that I've had in the past. I'm not saying an amateur title is or a professional title is the same as Cage Warriors title, but still a title. Yeah. Uh, and the second thing is, in terms of the preparation, you, you can't just celebrate the fact that you're here. I'll celebrate on the 20, 26th of November when I've got that world title and I wake up as a world champion. That's when I will celebrate um, I'll celebrate that moment. So just now, I'm just completely focused on uh, fighting on the 25th of November. And as I say, every day thinking, what would a world champion do? So when it comes to that fight, I'm like, I've conducted myself in a world championship manner. So I cannot leave here tonight without this belt because I deserve it. Yeah. Talking about atmosphere there, I was at one of your fights uh, back in Manchester. And I think it had one of the best atmospheres um, of the night uh, in, that, in that card. And I think the second round submission of memory serves. Um, what is your expectation of the atmosphere down in Newcastle? Because it's not that far of a trip from Scotland. No, no, it's not that far. And and the crazy thing is, see, before I even had a fight announcement and no talk of a title, I already sold over 100 tickets. Wow. So people couldn't believe it when I was selling them. And and that, this is not... I, I hear quite a lot of fighters saying I'm selling loads of tickets. And that's fact. Like, that's not people that... And I know a lot of people that haven't used my ticket link. So you get over 100 people buying a ticket when you're not even signed for a fight so the the atmosphere that I'm thinking of I, I just and, and you've got other Scottish fighters in the card Chris Bungard and Stephen I just think the atmosphere is going to be am, a, amazing and I'm a big believer in like manifesting and visualising and that's 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 becoming a huge part of um of my preparation for this fight it's going to be electric and I appreciate you saying that about the, the atmosphere and the support 
that I have behind me have, have always been extremely strong from, let's say, my second fight ever, second amateur fight. Um, so I always think, like, oh, I've been saying to myself, well, it's pressure's perspective. And what I mean by that is people might think having a big crowd is pressure or fighting for a world title is pressure. It's not. And the reason why it's not is because this, this is everything that I've came after. I've, your first fight, you're begging people to come and watch. And then before you know it, people are coming to sign up to a fight that you're not even official on. You want a world title, you want to win a fight. Like these are all these are all th- or what fighting a big show. These are all things that I want. So how can I how can I feel pressure? Like this, this is a it's a privilege. I love it. Um there's been an announcement from Cage Warriors in the last week or two that there's a return to Scotland being planned. Uh, I'm sure that was music to your ears, but in an ideal world is the first defence of this um Cage Warriors Bantamweight title. Does that take place on Scottish soil? Yeah, yeah, hopefully it's the first quarter of the year. And um yeah, defend the world title in Scotland, and that's a huge moment for the Scottish MMA. Like when I when I first came, when I first signed to Cage Warriors, I, I kept saying to people, "I'm going to try and bring them back up." Um, and now that they're back up, it's a it's a huge step in the right direction for Scottish MMA. From a kind of selfish point of view, obviously the title is the primary goal in just just under a month's time. What in an ideal world is next for you? Uh, once you win this, once you win this title belt, because we've seen some champions like Sir Kalen, Get the move straight to the to the UFC after winning the title. We've seen some like the likes of George Hardwick go on to the contender series, or we've seen some in the case of George Hardwick have to defend a couple of times before getting that call up. So, in an ideal world, where would you like to go next following this title win? Uh, th- there's no doubt about it that when you win the Cage Warriors belt, it's like having a golden ticket to the UFC, isn't it? Yeah. Um, if you're a Cage Warriors world champion, then that's that. I think what that does say is that you're ready for that next step in the UFC. So. For me, what winning that title that will tell me that I'm UFC caliber. Um, you don't just get given that title, and that's not just words. You've won that title. You've won at that point. Mm-hmm. I'll be in a five fight win streak in cage orders, four, uh, three guaranteed finishes. Hopefully, four out of those five are finishes, and you've got a, an excellent resume behind you. So, if the UFC were interested, then you you would take that next step. And if you go defend the belt, then you get to go defend the belt in in Scottish soil. So, for me, it's a win win, and and I'm just I'll just I'll just be focused on. Um, whatever opportunities are presented to me. But as I say, you win that Cage Warriors World title, it's a golden ticket into the UFC and um, it tells you that you're ready for that next level in your UFC level. Yeah. Well, last one from me. I know you're a very busy man. What I would like you to do, and you can be as brief or as detailed as you like with this one, give me a walkthrough of the perfect day on the 25th of November. So what happens when you wake up in the morning to when you go to sleep at night in a perfect world? Uh, perfect morning. You you wake up from having an excellent sleep. You have a good breakfast, shake off, um, get a wee workout in, hit some pads, get a wee um, move about, grapple, and then you head to the venue. Uh, when you head to the venue, you start like, um, you feel out the cage, you do your walkout, you take in the environment, you watch a couple of fights, you start to warm up, you get in the zone, and then you have this wee switch where. It's it's all about performing. Nothing else matters. Um, I'm getting pure butterflies, like thinking about it. Um, as I say, you do your warm up, and then now it's just you're just switching to this like winning mindset. Reese McEwen, the human being that lives every single day, is, is not that person anymore. It's just all about performing to the best of your ability, winning at all costs. You walk out to your songs. You take in the atmosphere. You take in the environment. You come in. I'm probably coming far second, not sure. Gloves, you might touch gloves, you might not. Who, who really cares? To be honest, it's not going to make a difference. Mm. Um, And then you go and ideally, in the perfect world, would you get a finish in the fourth or the fifth round in true championship style or you get a five-round decision win? Um, I want to go into round four, round five to say I've been to championship rounds. I don't want to just prepare for it. I want to do, to, do, do it in a true champion status. So if that was a three-round fight, that fight would have stopped. But what the difference between this fight was a championship fight and it was round four or round five. Um, and then in a perfect world, I, I get my hand raised, um, get the title around my waist, I go to the top of the canvas, celebrate with everybody and um, probably cry all night with, with emotion and happiness and um, just, yeah, just it taking the whole the whole day and, and but be buzzing and then eat what was a food. <laughs> I love it. Well, I can see it's that that thought is stirring up some emotions in you, so I think that's the best place for us to end. But, Reese, it was great to catch up. Great to see you in this position. Wish you the best luck for the rest of the training camp. I look forward to seeing you back in action next month. 
Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it big time.